Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about stuff that I used in nursing school that were really helpful for me. Not a lot of people mentioned it. Compression seconds. So what compression seconds are used for is that they increase the circulation. So for someone who's standing all day, like a nurse or a nursing student, even a runner, someone who's on their feet and all the fluids are going to pull at the ankle. So there's a lot of pressure in the vein and it could cause varicose veins or spider veins. So what most people do is that they wear compression seconds. Some stuff that people do not like about compression stockings is that it could feel a little tight, which it's supposed to do because it's supposed to, to circulate the fluids, but it could still feel a little tight on the feet, and you sweat more in them. What you want to do is that you want the compression stockings to be between 15 and 20, so not too tight. So if you want, the link's in the description below. Pygmonics for pharmacology. So as everyone knows, pharmacology is one of the toughest subjects. Um, the reason for that is because it's plain memorization. What they do is that pygmonics are pictures and characters of stuff that you have to memorize. Let's say, for instance, if you look at this picture, so let's say penicillin, you have to know the side effects, what categories, um, the interventions, the contraindications, etc. So that's all play memorization. What they do is that they show you pictures and mnemonics, and they tell you like a story about it, or just play mnemonics, or you can even make your own. And it helps you remember, because when you see like these random stuff like a pencil for penicillin, you'll remember penicillin. And when you see it all comes together, then you'll remember the medication, the intervention, the patho behind it, the contraindications, etc. So these are really good for people who are visual learners, and for those who are not good at memorizing like me. I personally need to understand and not just memorize it. So you can make your own pygmonics if you don't like theirs, and you could also use it for other classes like pathophysiology, etc. For me, Personally, pharmacology was my hardest, so that's why I use it for pharmacology. The cons for it is that it costs money, it's not a free. You can check in my description box for a discount. The Lumen Cardiology Stethoscope. So for clinicals, you can need a stethoscope. And the Lumen is the one that everyone recommends, etc. But the reason why I say the cardiology one is because a lot of people buy the Lumen stethoscope and it's really good compared to the other cheap stethoscopes. For me, I'm going for my nurse practitioner program, so I'm going to be like diagnosing people, etc. And for people who are in the ICU or really difficult patients, you want to really hear. You don't want to be like, oh, I think it's um, normal, I think I heard this, I think it's like this. So the Lumen Cardiology Stethoscope has a higher quality built, it's more precise, you hear it much louder, it has a double sided tubing which makes it a more accurate sound, um, it has a deeper bell, a larger chest piece, etc. So the thing is, it is expensive. It is quite expensive. It could be like $130 to $200. A lumen stethoscope is expensive in the first place, but this one's just a little more expensive than the regular ones. Another pro is that it has a seven year warranty. That's seven years, so that's good. A recorder. So a recorder could be very handy, actually. I used it throughout my whole entire school and it cost no money for me. What I did is I just went on my iPhone you can look in the link below, you install this app or any other app like this, and it records the lectures. And what this does is that you can always go back to the lecture. I also listened to it on my way back home, the whole car ride, and I didn't have to review it again when I got home because I just reviewed it in the car. One bad thing about it is that not every teacher allows you to record it, so some don't allow you to have your phone. If that's the case, you could just buy an actual recorder. You could also use OneNote, and I'll describe later how it works and what to do. A pocket reference cards. What this is, is that it's a little reference cards that could be of lab values, of placements to put your stethoscope, or even pharmacology, whatever subject you pick. And it's a little pocket size, so it could go in your pocket in clinicals, it could go in your pocket if you're traveling on the subway. What I did is that I wore it in clinicals, right in back of my name badge, I would put that badge, and then you could just flip it over and use it, and then to memorize the stuff that you got to memorize. There's no really bad about it because it's really cheap. Like you could buy the little ones for $2, you could buy a whole stack of them for $30. They're really cheap, really accessible, and really handy. Planner. So a planner is extremely important because, because yes, we do get a schedule at the beginning of the year, but no teacher actually sticks to it. It keeps switching around and they keep adding stuff, moving test dates, etc. So a planner is really good, especially to write in a pencil, because if you write in a pen, you're going to have to cross it off, then it's going to be messy. So if you write in a pencil, and then whenever the teacher switches, or whenever they said, oh, test, quiz, tomorrow, then you just quickly erase and put in the new one. So there are two options. You could do it with paper. You could actually buy a planner, or you could have like a digital one. So it could be online, on your phone, the regular calendar app on your phone, 
or Google Calendar, whatever you want. Laptop or tablet? I use a Surface laptop. So the Surfaces could be expensive. All laptops are expensive pretty much. I did not get the newer one. I got Surface Pro 3, which was only like $200 or $300. If you look in the description, you could see the link to buy it. It's not the newest version, but it works perfectly. I had no problem. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I've been using it for over a few years. So there's a few reasons why I like it. First of all, it's a laptop and a tablet, both in one. You only have to carry one thing around. I know a lot of people buy the Mac, and then they buy also an iPad so they can write on it. Over here, it's just one. It has a lot of gigabytes. It comes with a keyboard. You can take off the keyboard if you want to use it more like an iPad. It saved me a lot of space. It saved me money because I didn't have to buy an iPad and a laptop. It was perfect. I highly recommend using it with OneNote. So on OneNote, they have real cool features. I'm just going to list a few of them. So you could record on OneNote, and while you're recording, you type the lecture or type whatever you want. And then when you're going back through your notes, you could press on it, and it will play the recording from wherever you press from. Another cool feature is that you could search. Let's say you remember talking about Hirschsprung disease. So you could search Hirschsprung disease, and then it will show you where in your lecture where your teacher was talking about that. Some other cool stuff is that you can write on it, you could color, you could highlight, you could use your pen, you can make graphs on it. It's really cool and I really highly recommend the Surface. So here are just three other must-haves that really help me. A good briefcase is really important. It should be one that could fit a laptop, your books, your food. You're basically living in school. And another point is that you want the weight evenly distributed. I know a lot of people have like cute knapsacks and goes on one hand. But, you know, when you're carrying heavy books and when you're carrying a laptop on it, you end up being, at the end of the year, your back's going to hurt, your shoulders are going to hurt. Um, it's not good for you, so just get a regular knapsack and the weight will be evenly distributed. Another must-have is textbooks. Obviously, everyone needs textbooks. What I just recommend is that you buy it on eBay or you rent it. I know people get new textbooks. They cost like $200. I really don't see a purpose in that. Buy on eBay, you buy it for $20. You can even send them an offer for less money than they put it on, and usually they'll accept it. But, or you could just rent it for the term from Amazon. Another thing is that you want to find out if you really need it. Because I know for me, my teachers gave us a whole list of stuff, and I bought all of them the first semester, and then we only use one of them. Study sheets and guides are one other must have. So, these just help with your time management because you don't have to write everything down, it's all there for you. You can memorize it. It's also very clear and organized so it just helps if you are a little bit confused on some subject. So here's my last tip. So I would just tell you to be very smart with saving money if that makes any sense. I know a lot of people like to save money and I also do but at the end of the day you have to think long term. So if in the long term you're gonna have to buy another one or if the long term you're not gonna get good grades and you're gonna fail school spend the extra $20 or even $100 and make your life easier during school and just look at the long term. In the long term you're going to be a nurse, you're going to have enough money to pay back from your whole loan, what's an extra $100 from the whole loan. So that's the end of the nursing school must-haves. If you want to buy any of this stuff, all the links are in the description box below if you don't want to have to look for them. And don't forget to like and subscribe and you can let me know what other videos you want. Thank you. Good luck.